Sadist, by definition, is a person who derives pleasure, especially sexual gratification, from inflicting pain or humiliation on others. Theodore Millen, an American psychologist, claimed there were four subtypes of sadism, spineless sadism, tyrannical sadism, enforcing sadism, and explosive sadism. Each of these types of sadism has their own personality traits, with spineless sadists who are deeply insecure and act like cowards, like to select powerless scapegoat and swagger in public. They are counterphobic by seeking out their source of anxiety in hope of overcoming them, while tyrannical sadists like to be mean to people by being abusive and inhuman. Enforcing sadists sublimate their instincts by participating in socially more acceptable activity, like judges or cops where they have the right to be merciless and pitiless, occupations where they get to search out rule breakers and punish them, and lastly, explosive sadists known for unpredictable outbursts and fury that are just explosive usually occurs when they are frustrated or disappointed with their lives and they would take it out on others, especially family members. From all these types of sadism, enforcing sadism is the only type of sadism that found their way to assimilate themselves into society and to be socially accepted. Their actions towards the victims usually aren't very brutal though can significantly impact their victim's life. For example, school deans have great consequences on students' life, or judges with the people in the trial. You may even have had some encounters with sadists, though less extreme and more widespread, called everyday sadists. They may come in the form of internet trolls, or a school bully, or people who spoil the ending for other people. Everyday sadists have a high interest in violent video games and gory stuff like torture or freak accidents. While some of the sadists in this category have little to mild urges for violence, there are other sadists that crave for more extreme acts of violence. There are many cases of sadism from sexual assaults to homicide in 2017, in Japan, Takahiro Shiraishi, also known as the Twitter killer, was convicted of killing 9 people where he contacted people who post suicidal thoughts on social media and befriended them, saying he would help them to die. He would bring the women to his house, then strangling them to death. He dismembered 8 women and 1 man, calling it homicide with consent. After one of the victims gone missing, her brother accessed her Twitter and told the police about the suspicious activity, leading them to his apartment where they discovered nine heads. Later in the trial, he said he killed them without consent. The man that he killed was a friend for one of his victims who was seeking her whereabouts. On December 15, 2020, he was sentenced to death. Marcel Anderson was assaulted by a sadist when he helped a fellow teacher move into a new house. The sadist held them at gunpoint and tied him, putting him in a room and verbally assaulting him. Then sadist stuck a pole in his anus causing damage to his internal organs. He was nearly killed in the attack, endured weeks of surgery and months of painful recovery. Anderson suffered psychological trauma and anxiety from the experience that he went through, but now he talks about it openly to raise awareness and to help people struggling with the same thing, especially men who have been raped to fight the stigma of men being a rape victim. But why are sadists doing this? No one really knows for sure, but something that sadism is an adaptation for us to slaughter animals when hunting. Others said it helped people gain power. Neuroscience suggests sadism as a survival tactic when times get rough. When foods become scarce, neurotransmitters called serotonin fall, 
making us more willing to harm others as it becomes more pleasurable. Luckily, sadists are rare. Around 6% of undergraduates admit getting pleasure from hurting others. Sadists are shunned by society, though some mild form of sadism, like sadomasochism, are kind of accepted for kinky people with weird fetishes. But is it their fault to be sadist? Or is it a choice to become a sadist? Sexual sadism may have started early, even during infancy. What I would predict is that this kind of behavior has its origins very early in infancy. The way babies are treated or abused may have long-term consequences for the development of the pathways for pleasure and pain, said Jean Desity, a professor of psychology and psychiatry at the University of Chicago. Though not all sadists have experienced some kind of abuse during childhood, so maybe genetics are to blame. So it's not their fault being a sadist, just like pedophilia. It's not wrong to have those feelings because we can't control how we feel. It is a question of degree and of acting and not acting upon their fantasies. Not all pedophiles become child molesters. Just like sadists, even having dark fantasies, not all act upon them. But it is wrong to engage in pedophilic activities or sadistic activities. It must be a burden to have all those fantasies and not being able to do anything about it, especially sadists with extreme urges. Though some studies suggest that sadists feel worse after some acts of aggression. This may mean that sadistic acts make sadists feel good only in the moment but bad afterwards. Just like alcohol consumption, binge eating, risky sex, or any bad decisions that make you feel bad afterwards. But imagine a place where sadism is accepted to help the police or the authorities. A place where the justice system prioritizes pain or the concept an eye for an eye for criminals. Imagine a job where sadists can do whatever they want and still be considered socially acceptable being a torturer in prison. Torture is prohibited by international law. Even so, many countries are still using the method and these countries are using torture methods to their citizens, mainly to oppress or to keep in control. However, a poll from ABC News and the Washington Post found most of Americans support torture. 58% of Americans say Torture is sometimes justified as a general matter, though some people think it's all about retribution, not deterrence. For those who support torture, they argue that why would criminals like Ted Bundy or John Wayne Gacy deserve comfort? Their crimes are cruel, so why show mercy when they didn't even show it themselves? The Boston bomber, Anders Ruvik, Ted Bundy, have little to no remorse as to what they have done. So maybe this is where sadists come to play. Maybe in an imaginary country where people hold the idea eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, where sadists are accepted by society that find the punishment acceptable for the most violent criminals. The sadist would work in prison to be a reminder for the crimes of what the violent criminals have done and at the same time, making their fantasies a reality. Then, it would be the sadist perfect job.